Hello students, your instructor here, John Mandula with another screencast. This one is not instructional. It's uh, as far as software goes or how to use things in Dreamweaver or Photoshop or what have you. This one is more um, theoretical. Okay, uh, so just follow along. This kind of is how to understand how all of your HTML pages and CSS files can work together. All right, so in this example, okay, in this kind of diagram here, what I have here is just my index, my HTML file, right, which is in blue here, my index file. And you can see it's linked to, so in other words, I would have done all this work in Dreamweaver, it's linked to a CSS document which does nothing but specify all my web fonts. And also linked to, even more importantly, a document which specifies all of my styles. All right, so it's linked to two different CSS files at all times. And that's why I have here that kind of acid yellow here, and then the lime green here kind of showing up in the HTML document. Okay, so that's how those two are linked together. Now, when I add another page, I want to link them to the same CSS document, at least for our concerns. You do much larger sites, um, that may or may not be the case, but for us, the small brochure websites, we want them to link to the same CSS documents. So let's say I add a page, and I do something like this. We'll just call it page one. Okay, it's an inner page in our document. Notice how the CSS has grown. All right, it's the same CSS file, but it's grown. So this is still linked to, as you can see, um, right, linked to the web fonts, the acid yellow there. And the reason why I have the lime green and the slightly darker green is show that you know it's using all things that CSS had before when it, CSS only contained styles for the index page, and also has the stuff that's been added specific to this page, specific to this HTML page, this inner page. That's the dark green is. But as you can see, it's still the same file. All right, so just keep adding stuff to the same file. So even though this page, the index page, is not using that kind of grass green, it's OK. It's only going to call for the things that are lime green. All right, I could have made this all the same color, but you get the idea. Let's say I add another page to the site, and it has new things. Well, it's called page two. And it has, you can see, it's still linked to the same CSS page. The CSS just keeps growing and growing and growing. Okay, so now this kind of middle green is what, right? It needs those elements that weren't present before, perhaps. Now it needs those elements. So those elements have been added to the CSS document. Or the web fonts, let's just say in this case, stay the same. But those may, you know, if you decide you want more fonts in your site, your web fonts file, CSS file, may grow as well. And let's say I add one more page to my document. And notice that it's also linked to the CSS styles file. And the CSS just keeps growing because maybe it needs to accommodate or include stylistic information for things that are specific only to this HTML page. Maybe this has some special images or some kind of animations, or maybe it has some specific type of information or some headings or table information or something or forms that weren't present and these other pages. So these other pages didn't need those things to define in the CSS file, but this one does. So this is how you have multiple HTML pages all linked externally to, or I should say, all linked to external CSS files. One defining only your web fonts in this example, and one defining all of your stylistic information. What does your H1 look like? What does your H1 inside of the wrapper look like? What is your H1 inside of this other div part of your page look like? Okay. What are the images? How do they react when they're part of the navigation, when they're part of, you know, the content area of the page, when they're part of the footer, what have you? Okay, how does the form look and act? How is that defined? So, not only are you going to have HTML tags may be different, right? This one has forms, and that's what the dark green is signifying. Not only will use different tags, which doesn't really change the size all that much of your HTML file, so to speak, but your CSS document will just keep growing and growing and growing. And it's okay if it's big and and has a lot of very specific instances. That's okay. That's what CSS is for. All right. That's what it's for. To include all those special instances. So if you're used to using InDesign for print layouts, multiple page print layouts, it's the same concept. You know, one page of your print document might have these special kind of headers and text. Maybe another page of your document has different headers or a sidebar element, you know, or what have you. It use different styles that are only relevant to that page. So that's how you can think about how pages are linked to CSS.